Hello, and welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. Last episode, we discovered more about Pitax and King Yerovedi himself, and found out some pretty dark things about him, but we're not done just yet. Let's talk to um, some more people, starting with Atalia Gitarin here. Greetings, your highness. I'm Gital Atalia Gitarin, headmaster of the Academy of Grand Arts. Welcome to the tournament. Is this your first time here? I'll be honest, I'm delighted to hear what you've done with the free marches. Not so long ago, it was little more than a hole in the ground, but you've brought it real civilization. Bravo. How fair is the academy? Oh, just splendid. If you ever find your uh, find time to visit Pitax, I'd gladly give you a tour. We're currently holding an exhibition of our graduates' works, though it's it's a pity that... No, no, it's fine. Believe me, we have plenty worth coming to see in here. I get the impression that something's upsetting you. Probably passed by someone. Okay. Oh, no, please don't worry. I'm just disappointed that one of our best students, Trebison of Cordellan, couldn't be here today. How could be singing... He could be singing in any capital, but the king chose to send him to some backcountry village called Littletown. Um, of course, his highness would never squander talent, so I'm sure we'll hear from Trebison again, but still, I do worry. Sorry about that ping. Um... I think that was uh, one of my uh, videos uh, just converting. Okay, anyway, I hear you're not exactly thrilled by Irovedi's power. Forgive me, Your Highness, but this is defamation. My students and I owe everything we have to King Irovedi. If not for him, the Academy of Grand Arts wouldn't even exist. It'd be based in gratitude on my part to engage in any conspiracy against our patron. You must have me confused with Anamade Belvara. She's certainly always ready to bite the hand that feeds. Or caresses. Who might you recommend I meet here? There are many respectable attendees today. You already know Kingy or Betty, of course. You should be sure to speak with the High Priest Dre Yarns as well. He's truly a wise and honorable man. And if I may give you one piece of advice, beware of Karn Vero. He may be business partners with Kingy or Betty himself, but those who deal with him usually find themselves in a bad way. Since he showed up in the city, our dear captain of the guard, Irise Khaleesi, has so much more work with that he... Forgive me, I probably said too much. Alright, farewell. It was a great honor and exquisite pleasure to meet you. I think we have, uh... One more person to meet. Click on this first. Anamade Belavar. Oh! The famous Baroness, no, excuse me, the Queen of the Free Marches now, has come to visit um, us. It is such a delight to see you here. Uh, tell me, are the songs you composed for your Betty as bold as the ones you sang at my capital? Have my humble verses so offended you that you still recall their sting? Please, Your Highness, it doesn't behave a hoof a person of your staying to take umbrage against a petty bard. Don't you know the old proverb? The tunes are chosen by the one who pays the piper. Uh, tell me about yourself. You could have easily asked any of my admirers who Anamadi Belovara is. There'd be about three quarters of Pitax, and the rest are all my haters. <laughs> you don't get to be the best among a city of poets and musicians without gathering a few enemies along the way. But why should I concern myself with hacks and so sore heads? Very proud of herself. What can you tell me about King Yerovedi? Love him or hate him, you can't deny he's a great man. The tax was a boring place before him. Only pirates, fences, and other scum did any business in the area. But the King Yerovedi came and turned it into the cultural capital of the region. With him in charge, the arts have flourished, and the city has been filled with songs, paintings, and statues. I just pray, pray that Calistria breathes the same love of the arts into the withered hearts of some of the other rulers in the region, who prefer to squander their resources on saber-rattling. Some may say that King Yervay doesn't have a taste for arts. Any successful person gets haters spreading dirty rumors about them. You should hear the things they say about me. Pray, pay in no mind. Our king is a man of exquisite taste, with appreciation for all kinds of art. Does the king have any enemies? Of course he has enemies. Lots of them. Just like anyone who's actually accomplished anything in life. Take some of the old trade houses, for example. Licienza and some others whom he stripped of their power. They'd love to see him at the bottom of the river, but even now, in their mutual, sorry states, they can't manage to work together. There's also Urse Khaleesi, captain of the guard. He was just seething with indignation when the king brought new rules to the city. But who wants to listen to the whining of failures like them? 
you have already brought a golden age on Pitax. I've heard King Iravetti can be too persistent in his fortation. I'd prefer not to discuss the private life of his highness with strangers, much less my own. The details of any interactions between us will remain just that, between us. Let's please discuss another topic. Tell me about the Rushby tournament. Our beloved king has run this tournament once in several years since he took the throne. Guests from all over the River Kingdoms come for it, from Daggermark to Mivon. It's a pity Bravoy didn't honor us with any representatives this year. I guess that Aldori, the Aldori aren't in a very festive mood right now. On the bright side, we got to host you for the first time, and Quistria willing, it won't be the last. Who might you recommend I meet here? That depends on who, what you're looking for. If you're in the mood for pleasant company, well, you've already met me. And if you're in the mood for some shot in fruit, you can listen to the whining of Gaspar Lencienze. His family lost a taxi crown in a card game. Or maybe Italia Guterin, the headmaster of the academy, who seems to think her skill at bureaucracy makes her a good bard. And if thrills are what you're after, especially the shivers down your spine kind, try speaking with Karin Vero, head of the Thieves Guild. Uh, farewell. Enjoy the celebration. So everyone keeps pointing me to this Karn Viril guy, so let's go talk to him again, since we know more about him. Uh, you again. I mean, what can I do for you, Your Highness? I've heard a few curious words, blood brush extract, and that you're no ordinary salesman and your wares are from far from mundane. Quiet, quiet, I say. Too many people here, too many eyes, ears. You want to talk business? Find me out in Pitax. I'll, I, I'll remember you. Yes, yes, Your Highness. A great honor. Go have fun. Quiet footsteps. Interesting. Okay, sorry, I, I was uh, looking at my guide. Um, we're going to go talk to Nunzio Arpea and do the uh, Rush Ride Tournament Fisher's Triathlon. Nope, nope, I passed it. Okay, uh... I'm ready to participate in the Fisher's Triathlon. Let's begin. Um, we tried to cheat by discreetly throwing fish at our opponents, but um, trumpets sounded over the arena, announcing the commencement of the Fisher's Triathlon. We were to distinguish ourselves in three sports, if you could call them such. You be the judge, dear reader. The first round was fish carrying, if you can believe it. They build narrow bridges over pits of mud and place barrels on either end. One side filled with fish, and the other side empty. The goal was to get all the fish from one side to other, barehanded, without falling into the mud. I'm sure this is just what you imagined for a royal tournament. Throwing fish at your opponents was prohibited. But there was one unofficial but well understood rule in the tournament. Don't get caught. We had to decide which of us would participate, as well as how fair we wanted to play. We tried to cheat by discreetly throwing fish at her opponents. Competing honestly among such company would be more embarrassing than losing. As Octavia ran across the bridges with heaps of fish in her arms, she deftly tossed the fish beneath the feet of the Grawlin competitor, who swept it fell into the mud. Another fish found its way right to the Daggermark competitor's forehead, setting him down alongside the Grawltainer. The judges then noticed a thing. We won the first round. The second round was untying knots. Competitors would be tied up on poles resembling ship masts, and they had to escape the ropes. We once again had a choice to make. Uh, we tried to cheat by sneaking a blade into the contest. It's well known that if you can, can't untie a knot, you just cut it. Octavia stealthily pulled a blade from her sleeve. While her competition struggled to escape their bonds, she jumped to the ground and triumphantly walked over to the judges. 
not an honest victory, but a victory nonetheless. We'd won two out of three rounds. We seemed to have our victory in the bag, but with the rivals we were dealing with, there was no time to relax. The last round of the tournament was diving for river pearls. Huge tubs were filled with mu mussels and river water, and some empty jars had been placed on sets of scales. We'd have to open the mussels with our bare hands, gather the pearls, and deposit them in our team's jar. Of course, if playing fair wasn't a priority, we could try weighing down the jar with other things as well. Uh, we tried to cheat by slipping some pebbles into our jar. Octavia barely dove into the muddy water and started opening shells, breaking her nails in the process. She put fistfuls of pearls into her jar as fast as she could, slipping in an occasional pebble, pinch of sand or dollop of mud when possible. Once time was up, her jar was the heaviest, a victory for us. Soon we stood on the pedestal as the judges awarded our team the victory. We were wet, muddy, and smelled of fish, but we grinned with joy all the same. All right. Okay, um. Let's uh, go to the next event. I'm ready to participate, participate in the boasting contest. Everyone's ready. Let's begin. This is where I thrive. The tournament continued with the boasting contest. The first participant, a man from Daggermark, stepped up to the podium and told a raunchy story about him sneaking into a temple of Christra and seducing all the priestesses, including the high priestess. In a single night, the crowd was particularly amused by the suggestive glances he kept casting towards one of the guests from Tymon. She simply smiled mysteriously in response. The second participant was a guest from Geralton, who told a completely implausible tale about his travels across other plains, where he battled undead hordes and defeated a blood-curdling monster. He was an average storyteller at best. He'd be lucky to get a seat for the story at the Academy, but the listeners weren't in inexplicably elated. Suspicious, we took a closer look at the crowd, and of course we spotted a bard using tricks of the trade, and likely a little magic to aid the Grald's man main performance. Uh, we quietly warned the bard that we wouldn't shut him up if he kept interfering. The bard got the message and quickly disappeared. Without the bard's support, the guest from Grawlin immediately lost the audience's approval. As he grew more nervous, he began mumbling and stumbling over his words, and he eventually left the podium among jeers and whistles. Then it was Pitax's turn. The kingdom's honor was represented by Anamade Belavara, a sweet-voiced singer whose smile could win over the most withered of hearts. Oh, Anamade. But while her voice was smoother than silk, her words stung like arrows. With a soft smile, Anamade told everyone how she'd spent months in our kingdom, warning our secrets and instigating a riot. Of course the honest trade of the bard and the shady dealings of the spy often go hand in hand. But, oh Anamade, who could have expected such an ugly blow from such a lovely lady? She described in surprising and exceptionally critical detail how much the citizens of our young state suffered under the atrocities of the troll assaults and the magic plague. She never stooped to actual lies, but she made it sound as though our queen, Baroness at the time, was simply drinking and debauchering while her subjects struggled. She made our crusade against Vordekai look like a cunning conquest of Varnholm, and the war with the Tiger Hordes was characterized as an irresponsible venture. Talk about cruel and unfair. When Anamade finished and left the stage, it was our turn to perform, and what feats did our participants decide to tell their performance? Ah, uh, she... I could win any of these, but I'm going to go with this one, the highest and hardest one to pass. Uh, um, yep, we're going to go with this. She regaled them with tales of our victories over the Stag Lord, the Trolls, Mordecai, and Armag. It wasn't easy getting the crowd excited for this story. They were all glorious feats, of course, but that was the problem. The audience had already heard them time and time again. Siana used all the eloquence of she could bring to bear to breathe new life into these old stories. The audience hung on her every word, sometimes laughing uncontrollably, sometimes holding their breath to avoid missing anything. Siana finally brought the story to an end, and the viewers gave her a standing ovation as she left the podium. 
The women from Tymon, a priestess of Calistria, went last. She told stories of her love affairs in faraway countries and on other planes, casually mentioning an unpleasant disease she'd contracted over her journeys that took her a long time to get rid of. Hearing that, the participant from Diggermark paled and grabbed as Bell, bringing roaring laughter from the rest of the audience. And finally, the judges announced the winner, Siana. She walked up to the podium to thunderous applause and took another bow. All right. Where are we? Okay, let's head back up and do the drunken brawl. Oh, we leveled up. But we'll do that level up after this. I'm ready to participate in the drunken melee. And let's begin. It will be splendid. They dare threaten me. Okay. I don't think that they're going to be able to hit me. I think even if they do, my health is so high. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, one second, we'll get the drunken brawl. Okay. Um, let's talk to him about the results. Um, the tournament is finished, isn't it? I'd like to know who won. Yes, His Highness is just about to make a speech announcing the winner. Look, everyone's gathering around now. Three hours and 30 minutes later. Lords and ladies, another Rust Rite tournament has come to an end. I'd like to thank all of you who honored this event with your presence. My friends, I'm happy to see all of you, but I'd like to give a special welcome to one guest who found themselves invited here for the first time. Today we had the Baroness... Uh, no, excuse me, it's Queen now, isn't it? Of a majority of what was once the Stolen Land. Thank you for coming, my darling. <laughs> I can call you that, right? I thank you with all my heart. I first learned of her from my friend Stefano Moscone. To be honest, his report was less than flattering. Impassable swamps, monsters galloping about, and a complete absence of any valuable resources. Nothing more than a dirty hole ruled by another bandit lord, hardly worthy of your attention. That's what he wrote back then. I'm so happy he was wrong. Truth be told, even now traveling that domain is a less than pleasurable experience. Some roads have appeared, but their safety leaves much to be desired. Take the sad story of the poor Toman Henvaki from Broughton. He set off to those lands and hasn't been seen since. His brother, Idrist, went to find the poor fellow, and what happened? He returned empty-handed. Toman seems to have vanished into thin air, like hundreds of travelers before him. At least Idrist was lucky, I suppose. He managed to come back alive. That's certainly considered fortunate for those who decide to swing through those lands. And the hunt the Baroness put on, clearly imitating my tournament? It was beyond description. 
While guests were out hunting hydras and owl bears, the latter came from behind and ate at the banquet table, along with all the servants. <laughs> Some celebration, right? Ah, uh, your words ooze poison. Is this how you show hospitality? If I've offended you in some way, just tell me and I'll offer my apologies. No, forgive me, I don't wish to seem impolite. <laughs> but getting back to the subject, I, all I really wanted to get at was that Her Highness is a personage truly as extraordinary as her lands. And I'm happy to see her at this celebration. And now it's time to announce the winner of the tournament. This year, all three contests were won by guests from one kingdom. I'm not sure what charms, tricks, or divine intervention helped her, but let's hear it for the winner! Your Highness, if you please. I know you're not exactly a master of ceremonies, but please try to say something articulate to my guests. You're such a dig. <laughs> Your Highness, dear guests, attending this tournament was a great honor and a true pleasure. I thank you all for an unforgettable day. And now, with the competition over and the prize awarded, let's get on with the main part of the celebration. Sorry, one second. The banquet! I can hear your stomachs growling from here. Let's get to the table, and later we'll see an unforgettable fireworks show. All right. All right. Um, let's see this reward we got. Is this it? Ring of evasion. Oh no! What happened to all my? Oh right. So let's put that on. That. There we go. Wait, oh, nope. Forgot this. There we go. And we leveled up. Uh, so we're gonna... This episode's gonna be a little shorter than usual, but we're gonna end the episode here. Thanks for watching. And next episode, we're gonna go do the Pitax River Bend and dispose of the River Pirates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.